Hey everybody, Jonathan Mark Mendes, Painted Love, and welcome to my channel. Today's project is all about a paint finish over this gorgeous sideboard. There is a tutorial of all of the prep work that was involved in this piece, how I got to this stage. It was all about the would you bend mouldings and where that I placed them on the surface of my whole design process of these gorgeous mouldings. So if you fancy seeing that, I will link it into the description box below and you can watch this in sequence. But today we're gonna to move on to a paint finish. I've decided to go for something very simple, but very effective over the piece. This piece is gonna live with me in my home. I'm not overly frou-frou. Believe it or not, I don't like overly um, ostentatious pieces and I've already added such um, character with the would you bend moulding, so I'm going to pare that down with the paint effect. So let's take a closer look at the actual piece. So first up, I'm going to remove the handles. Um, these were pre-drilled last week, um, and I filled the holes on the piece. And I'm going to sand those. These two holes were the existing handles, so we're going to level that off. This is the only um, prep that I'm doing today. We're going to move straight on into the paintwork, but I just need to make sure the existing holes. Everything's level. So I know that's level because I can see them as nice little round dots now, so they're nice and level. The handle will pop to one side and move on across the whole piece. So the colours that I've decided to go with is a base coat of country grey. I'm going for a kind of stony, weathered look, kind of monolithic. I think I've just made another word up. But because this kind of looks a little bit like Corinthian columns, I've decided to go for that sandstony sort of finish, but just slightly variations of colour. So. My canvas coat, I'm gonna do a simple, any what way, um, base coat over the whole piece with country grey, because it's such a lovely warm tone. And then we're gonna add some texture. So let's get stuck in with one flat base coat.
So the canvas coat, base coat over the whole piece has dried. I did this this morning. I've left it for a good two hours of drying time. If you're in a warm climate, it will dry and harden off pretty much straight away, but it's quite damp and cold in the UK. So it's had a good old um, drying time and it's now got great adhesion ready for my next coat. Now ordinarily, if you're doing a flat finish or an any what way finish, you would just go straight over the top of this. I'm switching out for a older brush. I'm going for a flat, this is a natural bristle brush because I'm gonna add some texture to the surface of the whole piece. I'm gonna try and not clog up all of my um, would you bends with texture. I'm gonna apply a little, little bit of texture to the, those areas, but generally I'm gonna apply most of the texture to the, the flat surfaces and then just kind of work around the wood you bends. I do need um, greater coverage, but I don't want to um, hide all of their beautiful details with texture. I'm not going to add a texture medium. Sometimes that I do, I would add salt wash um, and it works beautifully on a really flat piece. But like I said, I don't want to clog the details up. So let's get stuck in with this second coat of paint. So what I'm doing on the front surface, wherever there is a would you bend molding, I'm trying to limit the amount of stippling. I'm stippling heavier in the panels. So I'm going in the panel first and around the panel and kind of blending out to, I do not want to cover up the moldings too much. So but I want to get good coverage a little bit of texture. Stippling is really good for mouldings anyway because there is so many details, it helps you push the paint into all of those details. So it's a great way of adding the paint to a heavily moulded um, piece of furniture. So the big corbel on the corner, I haven't yet um, stippled over that, but I'm going in up and underneath these areas first, because that's where there's pockets that need paint in there. So going upwards, and then I'm taking my residue just over the top, like so, just adding a bit more texture, but not much, like I said, these areas, we want to keep all of these details ready for a colour wash over the top. So I can honestly say this paint effect is gorgeous when it's finished, but it will give you real great strength in your arms because it is like a workout. Quite literally, it is a workout. Um, if you've got bingo wings, they'll be gone. So keep on working. Also, the reason that I'm adding this textured finish is because it adds a super matte finish to the whole piece of furniture. It just adds that extra matteness to it. And also, when we add our colour washes, well, I'm gonna add a full colour wash over this and into all of the details, which will act a little bit like dark wax, but it will be tinted. It just behaves a little bit different compared to dark wax. And I will use maybe a little bit of dark wax as well. But also, these fine little anomalies that we're creating in this texture, it will grab to that in a irregular way. It will also, tiny little pigments will sit in these textures. Obviously more in the greater detail, in the would you bend trims. Um, I'm also gonna pop a, 
affiliate link for the trims into the um, the comment section below. And then you can uh, link yourself through to my affiliate link. I do not have an Annie Sloan affiliate link as of yet, but um, depending on when you see this video, there may be one in the future. So also look out for my affiliate link in there for Annie Sloan chalk paint. Yeah. Actually, I've said in the comment section, the description box below. I keep on getting that wrong, guys. Description box. That's where you'll find any affiliate links. Right, I'm building up and over here. Look, a little bit less over the Woody Ben moulding, but more texture just underneath and around. It really does pay to take your time over everything. So the stippled layer on the piece has dried really well. In fact, I left this overnight and I've come back to the whole piece of furniture with fresh eyes. And I've kind of changed my mind on what I was gonna do. So generally with this sort of look, I like to create lots of different anomalies going on on the surface. But like I said, I want to keep the paintwork really pared down, not too overly fussy. So. I was going to do uh, an olive wash over the whole thing to add olive into the details and make it look a little bit dirty. I am still going to do that. That colour I know works really well with this. But I just thought as a little extra at this point, I want to add little nuances and pockets of different colours. Um, so I am going to mix the colour up. I'm going to mix a sort of more of a a dirty sort of yellowy ochre colour to add patches. Also, I might add a pocket of um, um, some duck egg, maybe a little bit of cocoa. How I'm gonna tackle this, I've never done this before, I don't think, but I am gonna spritz the surface quite a lot and just take a little bit of each colour and kind of make colour washes over the top. And then I'm gonna go back with my um, country grey and stipple over it to kind of bed it back in and leave it all to dry again and then do the whole piece with the um, olive colour wash. So let's mix up a colour that I want to create the ochre colour. Annie does have lots of beautiful colours like Tilton and there's Arles, but I'm going to mix up my combination of a, an ochre colour. So I'm going to be using two unlikely colours to, together to make a, um, and they are kind of contrasty colours, so it will make a slightly ochre neutral. So I'm going to be using a rather old tin, battered tin of Provence that I found at the back of the workshop. Nevertheless, it's still good in the can. And also I've got some Barcelona orange here. We're going to go more Barcelona orange and a tad of the um, Provence. And I don't really need a lot, but we're gonna pop this in here. This is what's gonna make the yellowy tones in the color. Um, and then we'll probably just pop a little spoon of Provence in there and mix the two together and see what we get. So those two colors together, the greeny blue tones will neutralize. Yeah, it needs a little bit more most definitely needs a bit more. Nearly half and half. When you're neutralizing a color, contrasting colors, you do want to go half and half, really. It will find a color in the middle, but this will kind of add the greeny. It will make like um, almost what I would call a lovely shade of mustardy, mustard color. You can see already. See how that the bluey greeny tones have neutralized the the orange, straight away, it's kind of a musty, ochre, ochre sort of shade. A little bit more Provence. And if I have to go the other way, I have to go the other way. But I really like that. It's kind of a dirty shade of yellow. So I'm gonna use this as some of the highlighting, or low lighting, whatever you wanna call it. Just hints of this over the top, so it should add some richness. You know when you're looking, I'm thinking of um, stone. So when you look at a piece of sandstone, you have darker, like um, like iron that might run through the rock, which causes darker stainage. So that's where we're at with that. 
So let's get some water onto the piece and start applying some of these tones and washes just to add another layer of colour. So I've got my atomizer and I'm saturating the surface. I'm going to work up in this corbel first just because it's always very daunting when doing something like this. Even for me, um, and I know that all mistakes can be fixed, but I know that I want to see the corbel with a little bit more of this ochre colour and then we'll start, I'll go with the ochre colour because it's closest to the country grey and then I'll feel a bit more comfortable about adding the duck egg and the cocoa. So I'm just going to work here and we're going to add that ochre colour. So this is quite saturated with the atomizer. I'm going to take a little bit of the paint, you could water your paint down as well. But I'm not going to, I'm just going to play around with it by adding, tapping it in into some of the crevices and come across. I'm just adding patches of colour here and there and I'm going to keep it um, really wet and spread it around. So I'm kind of loosening the paint on the surface of the piece. As you can see, I'm working across the whole piece of furniture in a randomly random fashion with the three colours of duck egg, cocoa and the homemade shade of mustard. And I'm also using the original base coat of Country Grey to unify all of these shades, misting away with a spray bottle to keep the colours all blending beautifully together. So here we have it, it's had another good two hours drying time and as you can see the colours looked much feistier when they was wet but now there's just little pockets you can see maybe on camera where it's a little bit warmer in areas and cooler, it's just perfect, I absolutely love it. So now we're going to do that overall wash which is going to be olive and I just pulled out another colour that I pre-mixed for a project the other day which is like a very dark French linen. Um, which I might use. Now, ordinarily, when I do a colour wash, I would always say 50-50 um, water paint. In this case, I'm throwing all of that out of the window and I'm gonna do it what feels just natural to me to do here. I don't, I don't want to overload it with olive. I don't wanna make it a green piece, but I do want green in certain areas. So a little bit like what we've just done, um, I'm gonna start with a jug of water and a paintbrush, and I'm just gonna start wetting the whole piece, getting plenty of water on there. Then I'm gonna start adding my olive into the water. 
So it'll be a, just a little bit of a time, just to add a bit of color, just a tiny bit of tint and build that up until the point where I'm gonna take some of the details and take a separate brush, a smaller brush, and then add into the details and then use the other brush to soften out. So again, wish me luck. It's just what feels natural on this piece. So let's give it a go. So I'm taking my olive, I'm gonna add it to the remainder of this water, just a little at a time, small amount at first. That'll do me. Remember, we're making a very, very runny wash. And I suppose this is a really liquid down pigment. So that's what I've got. Make sure it's really incorporated really well. I've got some cloths, um, really damp cloths that I'm gonna use as well to rag away some of the, the pigment. I'm not gonna put it everywhere, but I am gonna go for details and soften away. So anywhere where there's a detail, So I'm now wrapping up with a really, really damp cloth. So this should unify the two things together without making it look brush strokey. So as I'm working across the sideboard, I'm working in smaller sections with the olive color wash. I'm applying the color wash to the detailed areas and then using my damp rag to rag away any residue of wet paint in areas that I don't want. Also, I have a dry rag too, which will absorb a little extra of that paint in the main apertures in the center of each Draws, just leaving the detailed areas with the color wash in. Also, you may have seen me using a brush. This is not got any paint on it. It is a dry brush, which I'm stippling away any excess paint again, just to add that really soft touch to the paintwork. Remember, keep on offloading any paint from that brush onto a clean rag and it will work absolutely beautifully. Okay guys, I'm now on my second day with the paint finish, um, probably four days into the whole project. Um, what I would say, as you probably can see on camera from the continuity of filming, this was much darker. So this has had a whole 12 hours of drying overnight and you can see it's really gone soft and beautiful. And I can just see pockets of the other color washes like the warmness under here, the coolness of the duck egg, some brownie tones up in that corner, you can't quite see that on camera. But those color washes that I did initially really do make that slight difference, which adds that more organic feel to it. So you could just do one olive wash over the, over the whole piece, but then I think you would end up with a very flat looking um, color wash. Top tips, 
when you're doing these colour washes and you're not waxing in between, you can wax in between colour washes. My advice on this sort of look, that the organic look, is not to wax, but leave the paint to harden for a long time. Overnight in this case, you know, I left, originally I left all of those colour washes to really, really harden because if you don't, and you add that amount of water, if there's any amount of moisture left in those uh, layers of paint, especially from the stippling, there's a lot of paint there that you're adding with stippling, it can reactivate. So the two can merge together. So if you leave it longer, um, your under colour should stay put a little bit more. Um, it's all right if they mix together, because again, it's organic, but that would be my tip. Let the paint harden. So if you have to leave it a day, leave it a day. Um, have a play with this technique. I think you'll really love the outcomes. I'm super happy with this. It's kind of got this stone-like quality, but with like um, almost like a mossy, um, you know, like weathered look. And, it, and all of the details are popping like mad with the olive in them. So I'm probably not gonna put the dark wax on there. I was gonna, I might just add a little bit of dark wax maybe to the, just under the keys, um, around the handles maybe, maybe just a fraction. Just tinker about with the dark wax. But all that's left to do now is just clear wax the whole piece. I'll probably do that on fast play so you can see it all happening. Um, it will go darker. Within a couple of days, it'll lighten. There's a lot of paint there for the wax to penetrate. It's like hand cream. Once you hit the surface, it'll go darker and then it'll absorb in. And over the 30 days, it will cure and it'll be really, really good. So here we have it guys, that's just about everything on this project complete, apart from 
reapplying the handles and I have decided to put a cheeky little bit of dark wax. I just couldn't resist. I'm only gonna pop it in areas like under the handles, under the key escutcheon and wherever there is a really dark bit of olive on some of the trim areas, but nothing too heavy. I don't want to spoil what's there. So thank you so much for joining me once again on this tutorial. If you've enjoyed it um, and you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notifications bell for future projects. Once again, thank you very much. I'll catch you on the next one.